off you get. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. That is the sexiest thing I have ever seen. You gotta be fucking kidding. Okay, it's time for that unboxing. This is uh, the mother of all mothers, I think. Certainly so far on the channel for me. And as always, we have the main act and the support act, the support band. Because I'm a rock and roller, that's, that's my language, guys. There's always a support act to warm up the crowd, right? <laughs> so we have a nice, really, really nice watch to do that. Let me just move them out of the way for a second, both of them, so we can talk about what else is, what else you can see here. David Argento sent me a bunch of cigars. I, I was expecting, he was like, hey, let me send you a couple of cigars. I thought he was gonna send me like three or four just to try out. I got an enormous bag, like a huge bag. Thanks so much, David. I won't need cigars for quite some time. I don't smoke every every night, so it's gonna take me a while to get through them, but I'm looking forward to trying them. These watch stands, guys, uh, are from Piguet and Son, or Piguet and Son. I'm not sure if you say it Piguet, like Automat Piguet. Uh, this is their uh, Croco covered stand. Look at that beautiful dual stand with marble base. And this is their other dual stand, which keeps the watches a bit more uh, separated. Mind you, I find you can take these things and actually put four on. If you're just careful, you put one watch a little down and one watch up. You can actually make it into a four watch stand. You can have another two there as well. Uh, love these stands. Go check them out. I think they're about 200 bucks uh, for this one. This one's a bit more expensive, of course, because of uh, the fabric they used there, but uh, really, really nice. What am I wearing? I'm wearing the uh, Sea Dweller SD43 with the red line. This is the uh, 50th anniversary watch. The true 50th anniversary, because it's uh, the Mark I version, the one that came out in 2017 and then was very quickly replaced with the Mark II. Let me look at some wines. I have a Sociano Malay. This is from 2003. This is an Au Medoc. Medoc produced more uh, wines in the Bordeaux region than any other region. I always find a good Medoc if it's kept well in the bottle for a long time and this has been in there like 18 years I guess. Um, coming up on 19 years then they they age really well and uh, soften out really nicely and gain a lot of structure. Gorgeous bottle, really interesting stuff. What else have we got? Oh yes, the conversation came up about 
Spanish wines recently from Alvaro Palacios, a very famous guy at this point because he uh, woke the world up to Priorat of Spain that's less famous than Ribera del Duero and Rioja, the most famous areas. Now Priorat is taken very, very seriously. Uh, it was a kind of a forgotten region for a very long time and he set up camp there. This is a mixture of, of course, Grenache and Cabernet and Merlot and so on. What I'm opening, as promised, I'm opening, I've already opened this bottle. This is a Pichon Longville Comtesse de Lelande from Pouillac. In France, in Bordeaux, the Baron passed away and left his estate to his son, who then became the Baron, and to his daughter, who then became the Comtesse. And there are two adjacent uh, chateaux, uh, beautiful land, beautiful gardens and beautiful villas there in France. And I have to say, as much as I like the Pichon en Ville Baron, which is the other one, I have to say that the, uh, the female touch here uh, led to the making of one of the world's great wines. I'm a big believer that this wine Right now, you can pick it up for maybe 250, 300 bucks. Uh, a couple of years from now, forget it. This wine is eventually gonna be classified as one of the world's great wines and you won't be able to get one under a thousand bucks. Reminds you a lot of watches, doesn't it? <laughs> Another thing I've got over here, I've got the red breast from Des Ferris. Thanks again, Des. And a great gift for my birthday, albeit like a month later, but I don't care. <laughs> this is from Stefano, the watch wizard, just in time.ca on, uh, on Instagram. Lovely guy, Stefano. And he sent me a bottle of blue label. So I'm gonna open this uh, a little bit later. All right, so another little sip here and let's start opening some watches. Look at the color of that wine, my God, wow. I was over in Vicenza, a town I used to live in, where my daughter still lives, and went in to see a great watch seller there, Concato. Go to see them all the time. They're the guys who, uh, who loaned me the um, Hamilton Murph for that uh, interstellar video. I thanked them in the, in the credits. If you know the channel well, you'll know that I uh, love the Seiko King Turtle. Did a big video on the uh, green dial one. Spectacular watch, love it. But this is a newer one that came out. Same style, King Turtle. Uh, very similar, but with different uh, kind of color setup. And strap. This is the Save the Ocean. Reference SRPF. 77k1 if you look closely on that dial you'll see some designs of manta rays there swimming in the ocean this is something that seiko have been doing for a while they make a save the ocean edition of their watches it's a bit like product red that you'll find like in the apple products for example that if you buy the red one some of the proceeds some of the money made goes to charity and uh, I guess Seiko are doing the same thing here with the uh, Save the Ocean idea. Some of the money spent on this watch goes to uh, charities that are involved with, you know, cleaning the ocean, ridding it of garbage and, you know, stopping whale ships and various other things. As you guys know, I'm already a fan of the King Turtle. So it was an easy sell for me. It's got the Sapphire Crystal, that widescreen Cyclops, which I know some people dislike, but I love it. It's got the ceramic bezel. It's a pimped out turtle watch. And uh, once again, a beautiful strap, very, very soft silicon, but without the rivets that the, uh, that the green one I have has. It has these funny rivets there. Uh, this is a little bit more plain just has some indentations there, maybe for flexibility, but uh, just outrageously pretty watch. 
I gotta say, just that dial in some light kind of shines back at you very silver gray and in other lights looks very deep blue. Uh, big hefty buckle on it there. One keeper, it's a big keeper, but at least it's only one. I hate when there's a, multiple keepers, two keepers floating around on you like that, annoying you. What do you think of that? Very, very nice. And one of my favorite things is the uh, cushion case, the way they've uh, designed the edges of the case here. So you can angle your arm like this. If you're leaning into something or pushing against something, it's not gonna cut into the top of your hand or, or here, it's gonna you know, fit in that angle. Some people were mentioning how they thought it was odd that I wear a watch beyond the knuckle that I like to wear a watch between the knuckle and the hand. And some people find it odd that it's so far up my, up my arm. But no matter what watch it is, I always feel like it's right if it's in that position. I don't, uh, don't have an issue. I don't understand these guys who wear a watch <laughs> down here. I'll never get that. Like, what the hell is that? Like, why would you wear... When I see a watch like in that part of your arm, I, it looks like it's there to me. That's what it looks like. It doesn't feel right. I think a watch should be almost at the knuckle there on that side, if, it, if you don't like it here, or on this side of the knuckle. I also, when I wear a shirt and the cuff comes down, the shirt kind of half covers the watch. The watch kind of peeks out a little bit from under the shirt, or if it's a suit or jacket or blazer. The, the watch kind of peeks out a little, which I think is a lovely touch, that shine of the watch kind of peeking out. If your watch is there, you're not gonna see the watch if you've got a shirt or a blazer on or a suit on. It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I always feel a watch should be kind of, kind of where my arm meets my hand. Am I, am I weird? How do you guys feel about it? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure it'll be a very divisive subject. Every time I watch uh, Jody from Just One More Watch, it, that's the moment that freaks me out when he shows it on the wrist. <laughs> he's a great guy, I love his channel, but he wears the watch, he's like, oh, look at the watch, and it's like, I'm like, ooh, get it down the, Urgh. These things retail for 610 euros, so probably 700 bucks in the States. I got it for 500 euros. It's easy to get a discount with Seiko watches, unless it's one of the very hard to get or limited edition or discontinued watches. If it's still in production, which this one is, it's not hard to get a hundred bucks off. It really isn't. And I think it's a smart buy because watches like this will eventually run out of production, be discontinued, and then shoot up in value. if that matters to you. It doesn't matter to me a whole lot, especially with a watch that I know I'm going to wear a lot, size-wise as well, just perfect on me. The green one looks very commando and it looks like you're ready for, for the army or something like that, so you couldn't wear it with a nice shirt. Whereas this one, because of its color balance and so on, would uh, look a little sporty and a little bit extrovert, but you could still pull it off. It's still got a certain elegance. I think it's a classier, slightly classier watch than, than the green one with the, with the grenade dial. So there you have it, guys. What a beaut. So before we get to the main event, a little swish of the uh, Bordeaux. And I am actually going to open the Johnny Walker Blue. I know some will say, you know, you're mixing grape and grain, but I'll just have a little bit of it and... Uh, I don't suffer from the grape and grain issue. My, my liver got up and left many years ago, guys. There's no, there's no problems there. I just want to get this puppy open. Ah, oh, it's just a beautiful thing, guys. You've got this cool little, uh, I don't know if it's a brass medallion or something, some sort of little heavy metal there, and this braided string mini rope here to open the capsule. And away she goes, like that. And then you peel her away. You've got to be careful because this is like a thick, thick capsule, metal capsule. You can easily cut your fingers on this puppy. So let me just strip her away. So let's get some in there. Oh, what a beautiful sound. Look at the color. 
It's like wood, liquid wood. I'm not gonna have too much because I've had some wine. Guys, good times opening a Grail Rolex. Come on. I got this watch from Spencer Dreyer at BQ Watches in London. Absolutely great guy, maybe the best grey market dealer in the whole of the UK. Certainly one of the more serious ones with the, the most experience. He has really hard to get pieces, an incredible collection of stuff out there at all price ranges. Uh, we went for a bite to eat afterwards and uh, I was on his weekly YouTube show, That Watch Guy London. That was good fun. But I wanted a heavy hitting piece and I had my eye maybe on a day date or something like that. And then I saw this. As you can see here, you've got this inner sleeve thing. And of course the unmistakable plastic green box. They're still doing it. You know, it's unmistakably Rolex. Let's get it open. Stop dilly dallying here. Let you see the watch. Would you look at that? Reference number 1165. 15 LN Lunette Noir. Because, of course, it has that black, that ceramic bezel, which only comes on either the steel version, the very famous TIE Fighter, as I like to call it, and uh, Panda, or uh, on the Oyster Flex in the precious metal. Came with the uh, price tag. You don't always get this. It's not always included. The price would be there. And of course, the, uh, the classic hang tag. These things used to be uh, kind of a wax red, like a wine burgundy red, but they changed them to green back in the uh, early noughties. Uh, before we get to the watch, what else we got? We've got the, uh, the booklet, Cosmograph Daytona, I won't bore you with that. And then of course the uh, guarantee manual and the card. This is a 2021 watch, it's brand new. This is what their new cards look like. If you haven't seen them already, they have a gold outer and uh, kind of look a little fancier. They have a chip apparently on the inside. Again, I've covered the serial number guys for obvious reasons, but as you can see there, it's from uh, mid July. So the 116515LN in rose gold. Now I was out with Spencer Dreyer, BQ watches and I was at his store, super impressive. And I was looking at watches. I was interested in, in something expensive, something gold. I was thinking solid gold. I was thinking maybe a day date in all rose gold or something, but he had three of these watches. These were released in 2017 and they came in black dial, um, chocolate dial, and this one, which is known as the sun dust dial. Now I've seen photos of all three and they're all very, very impressive. A lot of people talk about the chocolate dial. You know, honestly, in the flesh, the chocolate was not for me. It seemed a little too uh, Saudi prince or something. You know, a little bit too on the gaudy side. The black one was really, really gorgeous. I have to say a very, very close second to this, but this one just, it just took my breath away. Brand new watch, as you saw from the card. It's even got some stickers still on there. It's got a sticker right here. And then these stickers here are still intact. Uh, no sticker on the back and none on the clasp. I think I've put a couple of scuffs already on the clasp. It's no big deal. Um, still very tight. Like you can feel it's such a brand new watch. Just opening that, there's like a, a kind of a resistance because the bolts are so brand new. Uh, of course, Oyster Flex bracelet. I will call it a bracelet. It's not a band because it has 
uh, titanium strips on the inside to maintain its shape, its form, and to make it more durable so it won't rip or anything like that. So it does uh, technically qualify as a bracelet, even though it just looks like a piece of rubber. They use an end link as well, so it, it marries very neatly, cleanly to the, to the head. And of course, famously, this, uh, these Oyster Flex bands have these uh, kind of fins to raise the bracelet off your wrist and, and let your, your skin breathe a little bit, uh, similarly if you're in hot weather, you know, it might be perspirating or whatever. Uh, it's to allow a little bit of ventilation, very interesting design. A uh, very heavy watch. This watch is heavier than my uh, TIE Fighter, than my um, ceramic Daytona in steel, even though that has a fully steel bracelet. Fully rose gold head, as you can see, including the back plate. So no uh, cutting corners there with like an exhibition back that might be a way of uh, avoiding paying for extra precious metal. Now this is a solid precious metal watch. They call it Ever Rose, which I guess is a, a portmanteau of the word forever and rose. They make red gold by adding copper to 18 karat gold, 750 gold. And that copper with time can oxidate with the, with the gold and uh, become a little off colored or, or fade back toward just yellow. So what they've done with Ever Rose uh, is they've added platinum also to the mix, stopping it from oxidizing or aging in any way. And that's why they call it Ever Rose. It's always going to be the same kind of tone of, of red. It's a very subtle tone. You can see a platinum element to, to the metal there. It has a redness, but it's not over the top. Working our way in there, the bezel, of course, ceramic, and it has those uh, rose gold inserts there for the units per hour and, and the numerals and indicators all the way around. Then getting to the dial, um, very special, as you can see. I think there's a bit more platinum in there. I'm not sure. They call it the sun dust dial. And uh, yeah, it's very reflective and, and, and sunny in some ways but it seems to be a bit more silver or platinum in comparison to the rest of the watch. So it's kind of a highlight of the watch. Perhaps there's a stronger uh, mix of platinum in that metal. Of course, you have uh, Everose indices, the coronet there, and of course, the hands, including the uh, seconds hand. Now there is one distinction uh, with this model from the other ones. This is a brand new watch 2021 card and it does have some very important distinctions from the original one released in 2017. If you go on uh, Chrono 24, you're gonna see a lot of these, but they have something a little different about them. The indices are all black and the seconds hand is two. And honestly, I have to say, I think it ruins the look of that watch. I much prefer this configuration with the rose gold indices and a complete rose gold handset. For me, it just elevates the watch. This does have the easy link system here. There's no glide lock, but uh, you've got that extra five millimeters if you need it on a cold day. Snaps in like that, just to tighten it up. But there's a reason why I brought these other watches out today for this unboxing. It's something I wanna to bring to your attention about what I believe to be the two different species of Rolex watches. Do you see the way the side of this watch is very curved and luxurious looking? Kind of elegant curves, sexy curves and that, no hard edges. Not all Rolex watches do that. It seems to me there's a kind of a separation of the families of Rolex watches. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I take this Datejust, for example, this is the uh, Datejust 41 with the white gold bezel, diamond dial, rhodium on the Jubilee. But you see the way the head has, you know, similar contours to it, that kind of uh, sexy, luxurious uh, turn to it, like that 
very similar to the Daytona. If I take this Submariner, the most famous, probably the most famous other than the Daytona of, uh, of all Rolex watches, it has a slab side. See that? It has hard edges and it wears in a very different way. If I take this GMT, for example, this is the famous 11670LN now discontinued, but the same shape as the Batman and the Pepsi, identical. Again, slab side, not those sexy curves, and even more accentuated on the Sea Dweller. Once again, a kind of tool watch feel. So you can see a difference there. And you might think, well, okay, well, that's their, their sports watches. That's, that's all that is. Well, not so fast, because if you take a look at the Yachtmaster, for example, this is a sports watch. Look at the edges on that. Very smooth and sexy, just like the Daytona, you see? So it's part of that of that family of, of Rolex. You'll also find it on the uh, Explorer 1, which is, you know, one of their quintessential sports watches. Again, same kind of thing. So it seems to me that there are two families of, of Rolex watch heads. There's these guys, and then there's these guys. And for some reason, they haven't really been identified by name, at least, out there in the watch world. In case you don't know anything about the movement in these, I'm sure you already do, but it's got the 4130, which has been in these watches since uh, the year 2000 column wheel, vertical clutch, so very nice action, engages beautifully, very, very smooth. No jumping start to it there at all. And you can let the seconds just run without having to worry about wearing down any parts or anything or reducing the performance of the watch. We'll put in those pushers again, lest I forget. So there it is, guys. Uh, absolutely beautiful watch. Gonna have a little bit more Johnny Blue just to celebrate the occasion. I've had the watch for a few weeks at this point. Just haven't had the chance to do a full unboxing yet. Honestly, I've worn this watch out in the wild uh, maybe twice. <laughs> Because it, I'm really aware that, you know, I've got a $50,000 watch on my wrist. But yeah, it's just, just an amazing watch. Again, to hold up other watches next to it. Uh, I'm dealing with a uh, wide angle lens here. Sorry, let me get in a little closer, be more realistic. Uh, you can see, you know, I love all these watches. The Explorer is incredible. Uh, the Sub. Even the Yachty, which you would you know, consider a, an elegant, classy watch, but then you put it next to this and all of a sudden uh, you get a whole new perspective. <laughs> I feel very uh, lucky, very blessed to own such incredible pieces, fantastic stuff. Thanks again for watching the Timeless Watch All, guys. I'll see you in the next one.